Okay, let's take a look at the examples for conjectures and counterexamples. Recall that a conjecture is an educated guess based on evidence that you've uh, accrued through generally through repeated trials of the same experiment. And a counterexample is an example that proves a conjecture wrong. So something that, that goes against what you've uh, made an educated guess about. So let's take a look. Example A says that there's an algebraic equation and a table of values for n and t. And the equation says that t, which is our output, is equal to n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3. So what we're going to do is put in a few numbers for input here and see what comes out for our output. So if we were to insert number 1 as our input, our n, then we'd have 1 minus 1, which is 0, times 1 minus 2, which is negative 1, times 1 minus 3, which would be negative 2. So we'd end up with 0 times negative 1 times negative 2. Now, 1 times negative 2 would be 2, but none of that matters because anything times 0 is 0. So our input then, if our input is 1, our output is going to be 0. Let's take a look at input of 2. If we plug 2 in, we get 1 minus 2, 1 minus 2 times 2 minus 2 times 2 minus 3. Sorry, this should be 2 minus 1, not 1 minus 2. Sorry about that. 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 times 2 minus 2 times 2 minus 3. Now again, this comes out to be a number and this comes out to be a number, but our middle term again is 0, and since everything's being multiplied, our output again is 0. And then finally, if we were to run 3 through, we'd get one, or 3 minus 1 times 3 minus 2 times 3 minus 3. And again, these turn out to be something important, but this one here ends up being 0, so the output is 0. So based on this these, uh, series of examples here, this series of trials, we might assume that doesn't matter what number we put in for n, so we could say for all n, t is 0. So based on any number we put in for n, our output is going to be 0. So that could be our conjecture. Conjecture. So then the question would be, what would the out, or what could a counterexample be? Well, if this was our conjecture, is there anything that would prove a counterexample? Well, if we were to go on up to, say, 6, Let's try 6. Then we'd have 6 minus 1, which is 5, times 6 minus 2, which is 4, times 6 minus 3, which is 3. 5 times 4 times 3 is 60, so that definitely proves to be a counterexample. So the input 6 could be a counterexample. All right, let's take a look at example B. Example B says that Arthur is making figures for an art project, and he's drawn a bunch of polygons and some of the diagonals. So he takes a, a line from any vertex and draws it to another vertex. Now, Obviously, for a triangle, he'd just be going right along the side, so there's nothing marked. For a square, he can only go from one corner to one corner without crossing, right? For... Uh, pentagon, he can do two. Five-sided figure has two diagonals. A hexagon, a six-sided figure has three diagonals. So from his examples, Arthur figures that if a polygon has some number of sides, then there are going to be n minus two number of triangles formed when diagonals are drawn from any vertex of the polygon. So if it has three sides, then there'd be three minus two, which would be one triangle. If it has four sides, one, two, three, four, then there'd be n minus two or two triangles. Five sides would be three triangles, one, two, three. Six sides would be six minus two is four. So it looks like his conjecture is correct. All the evidence that we have shows that his conjecture is correct. Can we find a counterexample? Well, no, because no matter how many sides we draw, there's always going to be those two first verte vertices 
right next to whatever vertex we choose that are going to be connected by the lines that are a part of the side of the figure. So no matter how many sides we draw, we're going to have two less than that number of triangles. So there isn't a counterexample. That proves to be a correct conjecture. And then finally, for example C, give a counterexample to the statement every prime number is an odd number. Well, generally speaking, that's true because if it's not an odd number, then it divides by 2. So if it divides by 2 and whatever the number is, say for instance um, 8, 8 divides by 2 to be 4, so it can't be prime because it should only be divisible by 8 and 1 if it's prime. But there is a counterexample, and that's the only even number that only divides by 2, which would be itself, 2. 2 divides by an even number 2, but 2 is itself, so that's the only example of a prime number that's also an even number. There we go.